Hey YouTube, and you specifically. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Zill and Chill. As you can see, I'm already in chill mode. Uh, next step is to introduce the drink, which is a Topo Chico Ranch Water Hard Seltzer. We'll give this one a shot and get going. In today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to that guy right there. Uh, that is E. Fay Jones. He's a pretty predominant architect that came out of Arkansas, surprisingly. Um, so much that the University of Arkansas has a Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design in his name. So who is this guy? Well, he's an architect that actually studied under and, and um, kind of apprenticed for Frank Lloyd Wright. Now you may remember E. Faye Jones' name from a previous video of mine, uh, which, was which was designed by R.E. Herndon, who apprenticed for E. Faye Jones. So that's kind of the lineage from Frank Lloyd Wright to uh, E. Faye Jones to Ari Herndon. Now there's a lot of different architecture, a lot of different designs we can go over with this guy, and we will. Um, I'm going to touch on a lot more of them in the future, but one, one house at a time. So let's get there. Today we're going to be showcasing 1100 East Rockwood Trail in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Now, the majority of these are going to be in Arkansas, which is fascinating in and of itself. <laughs> As you can see, it sold about five years ago for $770,000. And Zillow already has it right now, is estimated at 1.4 million. So if this is true, if this house is actually worth that, if it can sell for that, then this house is doubled, literally doubled in value in five years. Um, a $700,000 increase in equity isn't such a bad deal in five years. That's, that's crazy, I wish I could kind of get that myself. All right, I'll read the overview on it. So the iconic E. Fay Jones Butterfly House is now available. It's not, this is a previous listing. It is arguably E. Fay Jones' most recognized residential design and has been owned by the same family it was designed for since construction in 1961. This home has been almost completely preserved and original since construction. You will notice the first of several classic Fay Jones designed light fixtures as soon as you walk into the home. Two massive fireplaces, soaring ceilings, and abundance of natural light. And if you saw the previous house that was designed by Ari Herndon, you would have seen those built-in lighting fixtures as well. So he very, very much took after E. Fay Jones in here. And unfortunately for Ari Herndon, I couldn't find any information on the guy. So we're going with E. Fay Jones. Now this house is absolutely gorgeous. And it seriously looks like someone took a mirror to half of a house because it is exactly the same looking on each side with a really weird kind of V-shaped split here. Kind of like, again, someone took a mirror somewhere partway down a ranch home and said, yep, let's double that. And here we're stepping into the entry, foyer, foyer, however you want to pronounce it. And there is one of those built-in lighting fixtures. Um, I absolutely love the redwood and just the complexity to it. Um, I bet it's too bad. It's a shame that thing's not on. I'd love to see the light that comes out of it. And here we get into the dining room. Uh, beautiful lighting throughout. Nice tall ceilings, great natural light with these uh, floor to ceiling windows. It's really cool display cases uh, that go between the kitchen and the dining room. Plenty of storage for your linens, your plates, uh, whatever you may need. To, in order to host a party. And you'll see this house has not been touched. All right, here we get in the living room. As you can see in the living room, how much the ceiling just protrudes all the way to the outside. You've got these, you've got these beams that continue all the way through. The ceiling itself just continues all the way through. There's no, there's no surface change to it. With the floor to ceiling windows, gives this room just such an open design to it. Just. It looks like it flows clean to the outside. Absolutely gorgeous. Again, here's kind of that mirror effect. Um, it's just really, really cool. You've got two different fireplaces actually on each side. Uh, they are not connected through. So you can have a fire in one and not in the other. Really beautiful brickwork throughout in here. Again, the exposed beams. All right, now we step into the kitchen and I absolutely love how the woodwork from the cabinets just continues to this ledge right up above them and even kind of continues into the beams right there too. Everything just blends in together so well. Uh, you've got this nice opening right there into the dining room with these uh, old school accordion shutters. So you could shut that off if you wanted to. Really large 
tile countertop in here. Really neat hardware. Now, I had looked at this a couple of different times. I had to actually do some research on this because I see ventilation above. And what the heck is this thing? And I don't see a stove anywhere. So, you know, what's, what, what's going on here? Well, after a little bit of digging, I believe it to be one of these. Uh, I had no idea these even existed at one point in time. These are fold down stovetop burners. So when you're done with the stove, you just fold them right back up and get them out of the way of the countertop. So I believe that's what's sitting right here because you do have that ventilation that's, that this looks exactly like that right here. Really, really neat. And it's cool that they, it's cool that this house has been so untouched that they even kept something like that. And the amount of room inside of this kitchen is absolutely amazing. Um, the pictures are going to be a little split. It's going to jump to probably a bathroom here and then it will eventually come back to the to the kitchen so we can see what that stove looks like. Um, but you can even see an accordion style door here to close off the kitchen from the living room if you wanted to. Here we get another shot of those uh, display cabinets that go between the kitchen and the dining room. Really, really beautiful. Amazing woodwork. Um, I guarantee that's all done by hand. Here, like I said, jumps to a bathroom. Doesn't show a whole lot of details of the bathroom other than I do see that it has a um, kind of an infrared heat, or heat element uh, in the ceiling. Those are always kind of nice. And here we get to the kitchen and I believe this is a frigid air oven and definitely all original. Um, all the, even the fact that even the appliances in this house are original is quite stunning for something that was built in 1961. This stuff is still functioning, still being used and still there. Try that with the stove and oven you own today. Let's, uh, let's see what it looks like in 60 years. Another shot of the living room, just to give you an idea of how tall those ceilings are. When you look at it in comparison to something like a couch, just amazing flow to it again with it protruding to the outside just tons of natural light look at that that light coming down right there by the fireplace another shot of the living room you can see the outdoor patio right there big sliding glass door here another one over there different shot of the living room again there's that natural light just coming down and here's your shared wall to the kitchen there's your accordion door and even a little accordion shutters right here to close off the kitchen from the rest of the living room. It's funny how much open concept wasn't much of a thing back then, yet this doesn't feel closed off um, like you would expect. Plenty of room, plenty of natural light. The ceilings don't close anything off, but you can still close off the kitchen. Another shot of the living room. It's huge. That's a big room. And the natural light coming down on each side of the fireplace. That's just really cool. I mean, that, that lights up the whole room. You don't need any lights turned on. I also like the built-in lighting up here too. Kind of an old school track lighting style. Looks like it's the exact same style on the outside as well. And even their furniture, even the furniture in this house looks original. I don't know if that carpet is or not. If that carpet was redone at one point in time, that's the one thing I probably would do. Um, Cause that carpet's seen better days. All right, now we get into the home office here, which not only has a beautiful floor to ceiling window, to the outside balcony it's this gorgeous lighting up here in the ceiling that just makes it glow look at all that built-in shelving built-in cupboards and drawers built-in desk i would absolutely love to sit here and make these videos every single day at that desk although i'd have to have the camera over here so you could actually see it just beautiful imagine doing zoom calls from there doing your work from there yeah, I'd have no problem working from home with that kind of setup. All right, here we get into one of the bedrooms. A little odd that there's just a random box spring laying in here. But I love the brick that continues from the living room into here. Again, that big open ceiling and the high, high windows all the way across is cool. Gives you nice privacy, but you still get plenty of natural light coming in. This thing has not been updated because look at that pink tile. Holy pink, Batman. Still a beautiful bathroom though. I, again, I wouldn't touch it. I love, I love the high, the high windows again. I love the fact that, I mean, you can, you can see with that wood trim there that's continued from the display cabinets we saw in the dining room to even the chandelier uh, in the front entry. Another one of the bedrooms uh, with a bunch of built-in, with a bunch of built-in wardrobes. Uh, this is very typical for Ethe Jones and even Ari Herndon to build in all the drawers and um, all the wardrobes into closets or cabinets, kind of a cabinet style closet here. 
so that would all be included with the design of the home. Really big slider here, really nice floor to ceiling windows with that access to the huge balcony. Another bathroom here. Again, you get to see the trim just continues all the way through this whole house. Again, probably pink tile. That's a really interesting sink too. I've never seen one that kind of tilts the hardware, the faucet handle and everything in that direction. Bet you that'd be a real difficult one to find a replacement for. Even the towel racks look like they haven't been replaced. This house has been completely preserved. I believe this is another picture of the living room. If not, just another really open open room. Cool built-in lighting right there if you had any kind of art. That's really cool. The built-in light right there as well. Looks like the uh, chandelier from the front entry. And for the wife of the family, really nice makeup counter here. A good mirror, it's got good lighting to it. Plenty of storage around it. That's really handy. I love the piano hinge too, all the way around. Every single one of these cabinets seems to be on a piano hinge. Even the accordion doors, everything, it was all piano hinges. And it really, really minimizes the amount of hardware you get to see. You got another bathroom here, and something I haven't seen in a residential home is this multiple toilet roll system. Uh, great for house parties, but really interesting. That's definitely, that has a little bit more of a commercial flair to it than the rest of this home does. Just the way everything flows, the trim, the cabinets, everything flows all the way through the house. Every single room of this house was designed. Like nothing was left to the homeowners to finish. Beautiful roof line, how it just protrudes out like that. Very sharp. Look at the height of that. So all the way up there is that patio that you get to see from the primary bedroom, from behind the living room, the family room, the uh, office. So this whole thing up here is this giant patio. You've got this huge kind of a soaring V coming out. That's just really cool. What a great place to wake up and have your morning coffee, sitting there just staring off at that, with all the beautiful trees and vegetation around. And that's it, that's the last picture of this. So that's the E. Faye Jones Butterfly House. So I hope you found that interesting. I personally really love mid-century modern style architecture and I will get into more of his homes. Um, tell me what you like. What kind of architecture are you a big fan of? Uh, Tudors, craftsmen. Let me know in the comments too what kind of what, what you're drinking. This channel is all about chilling, relaxing, and taking a look at really cool homes and even weird, freaky ones if I can find some of them. So let me know in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.